Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brousseau. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity. It's a show about weirdos. My name is John Fahey. Joining me, the eternally gorgeous Mr. Aaron Pita. Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing great, John. I feel really good today. You uh, look great. Thank you. I showered. Mm. Uh, uh, I slept. Very, very nice. And I plan to do it again. Yes. <laughs> That's sounds... working out for me, both of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, know, you know who else is here, though? Tell me. One Matt Brousseau. Matt, how are you? Oh, hi, guys. I'm doing great. You look good, too. You look fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I took time to point that out a while ago. Mm -hmm. You did. It It was was an unsolicited compliment. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I concurred with it. But a little bit. You're at the right. You're at the right amount of shaggy beard's mm-hmm. a little long. You look really fucking good, man. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, we here. We are after our first birthday. How about that? Look, at we made it. Isn't that fantastic? Mm-hmm. Uh, here come the terrible twos. Oh God. Here they come, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that was very fun. We just uh, got together with our friend Whitney Melton visiting the program. We're talking about a little bit of old porn. That was very fun. Yes. Um, I've got a profile today that's got it all, baby. It's I, got all. I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. It's really got it all. Highly, highly, highly eccentric. Um, recommended by an Instagram follower of the program. Uh, he commented, and I deleted it so you guys wouldn't see it. Oh, Aren't I wow. a sneaky wow. boy? Wow, sneaky. wow. But you're very honest because yeah, yeah, you could have yeah. taken all the credit. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, I will uh, I will uh, make sure to thank him as soon as I can look up his account again. But first, Matt, you have a little something-something you want to share with the program. I have a really dumb thing, John. Oh, good. It's very, very dumb. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Well, that's very, very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. 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 Yes. I mean, uh, you guys like animals playing sports and shit. Ah, uh, yeah, I like animals doing drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. on a personal level. Yeah, <laughs> like, like 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 water skiing, squirrels and yeah, shit. yeah, shit like that. Right. Air, I mean, like Air, Air Bud Two Golden Receiver. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, one time I was playing. I was like ten, I think. I was playing hockey in the Adirondacks. Mm-hmm. I skated up the ice, and some kid took his stick. He skated behind me, and he took the stick. He took his stick and put it between my legs and and pulled. Uh huh. You know. And I didn't appreciate that, so I turned around and I took two hands and I slashed the hell out of the back of his leg. Wow. Refs didn't see it, but the crowd got so angry, they called a penalty on me, and someone from the crowd yelled, Get your animals off the ice! Wow. Yeah, so that was a highlight for You me. were the animal. I was the animal, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, um, you know. But why didn't they call him an animal? He well, started it. You know, it was a home crowd, John. Yeah. What are you going to do? Parents, uh, they suck. They do. Yeah, Will Smith knows. Yeah. Uh, but this is a 20, 21st anniversary of a very important uh, a movie release, uh, and I believe in our our youths, mm. our youth life. Mm. And uh, this was uh, uh, sent to me by a, a friend of yours, and it begins in 1989, John. Oh, boy. Okay. Sierra Nevada Mountains writer Kevin DeChico, he finds a stray golden retriever. <gasps> And, uh, oh, sleek, purebred golden retriever. Nothing like it. That's America. Uh-huh. Huh? Very friendly Grew up with dog. Golden retriever. Love it. Uh huh. His nickname was Buddy. Whoa, wait uh-huh. a minute. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, Buddy, you know, he's, uh, he enjoyed playing with shit. Uh huh. As you do. Right. But, uh, dogs do love shit. And he loved balls. Right. Oh. Uh, dogs love balls. Let me tell you. They go nuts. He took direction well, but, uh, Kevin said basketball. That was his favorite of all the balls to play with. No. Dude. And he discovered something. He discovered that if he threw the ball in a little bit of an arc, Buddy would jump up and try to bite it and knock it into a basket. No. Uh Uh-huh. Are you telling me that there is a a real story behind the I'm not only telling you that... I'm telling John too. Right, right, yeah. And you know what? You're also telling the thousands of listeners listening (laughs) to this right now. (laughs) So this guy, DeChico, he has an idea. He says, what if I film this? I'll send it to America's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah. Gets on. Crowd loves it. Gets on Letterman three times, doing stupid pet tricks. Uh-huh. Oh, everything's coming together. DeChico, natural writer, though, he says, "Oh, what if I made a movie where this happens? Oh, you, my God. You, you know, stupid pet tricks is just my hobby. My real passion writing. Yeah, mm-hmm. screenwriting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, it turns out this buddy, great actor. Uh-huh. Oh. 
Hands what a good up, actor. Hands oh, my God. He was on Full House once. That's how good of an actor he was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He plays in, a, there's an episode where Jesse, Uncle Jesse, can't shoot a basket. Oh, my God. So Comet the dog shows him how. Classic. He was Comet? Well, for one episode. Ah, uh, uh, you know, they do that. They did that with the girls, too. There was actually two two Michelles. That's right. Uh-huh. It's that's crazy. Absolutely very, right. Very Aaron. weird. Yeah. Now, see, the rumor is that he was always Comet. Not true. He was only Comet for the episode where the basket is made. He's 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 uh, listed as Buddy the Wonder Dog. <sighs> mm. Good IMDb, IMDb credits, huh? Uh-huh. Now, in 1997, that's his big break, because that's when Kevin DeChico finally gets... Production working on Air Bud. So this oh is oh my god. This is uh, this is eight years after Buddy's shooting hoops in the backyard. Mm-hmm. Clock sticking. Dude. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, no, he he works. You know, he's making a lot of baskets. He's doing other things. He's expanding. Uh-huh. Right, right, but I mean, you know, he's getting up there in, in age. Right. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, now, uh, uh, Air Bud was directed by part-time Buffy director Charles Martin Smith, mm-hmm. and uh, he didn't really care for dogs. He didn't own any dogs. He was like, I find him interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. But he said, what the hell? I'll, I'll do a dog movie. Right. At first he was like, nah. And then he was like, yeah. Right. Because, you know, money or something. Right. So he was a director of, uh, of he was a, so often director of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show. Correct. Right. Which was on, on air at this time. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh-huh. I do really quickly just want to interject. The motion picture Buffy the Vampire Slayer, very good. No. Oh. I haven't seen it in a very long time. Paul Rubens? Yes, yes, that's that's right. Yes. Christy Swanson? Uh-huh. And uh, the guy from 90210. <laughs> right. Very yes. nice. Yeah. Good movie. Dark, funny, good. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, pl- uh, please continue. <laughs> Part of this director, uh-huh. Air Bud, etc. Now, Air Bud is a classic movie story. Story of Norm Snively, alcoholic clown, whose dog messes up his clowning one day. Uh-huh. So he goes to bring him to a, presumably a kill shelter. Right. <sighs> now, the dog, uh, he falls off the back of a truck. And wanders through the streets where he finds a young 12-year-old boy who's sad because his dad was is a dead Air Force pilot. <laughs> and he's too shy to try out for the basketball team. <sighs> and Buddy shows up and they uh, he, Buddy shows him how to make some baskets. That is so stupid. Dude. Oh, man, Dude. my dad sucks. He's one of these dead Air Force pilots? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a drag. Yeah, this dog showed me how to fly. Now, uh, the dog, uh, he didn't know he was making baskets, you know? He uh, doesn't have a concept. No, of he's just, he would get a treat when the ball went in. That was yeah, his whole thing. Right. He, they're like, in order to make him follow the kid around, they'd take a tennis ball and put it in the kid's shirt so Buddy would track, you know, pet tricks. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things they realized is the dog was always trying to bite the ball, so what they would do is they would cover it in olive oil. So it would slip out of his mouth and into the basket. Uh-huh. Movie magic. Uh-huh. So this kid's got a uh, a greasy tennis ball in his shirt? Well, the tennis ball, the greasy basketball at all times. Oh, I see you what know. you're saying. The, right, ba- yeah. the grease, the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, the old... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it led to the famous line, Ain't no rules say a dog can't play basketball. Uh-huh. Which is... Uh, of course. Not true. But, uh, right, of course it's not. It's like in Mighty Ducks with the with the fucking idiot lassoes a kid. Uh-huh. Like, what do we call this? Roping? No, it's uh, interference. He's not wearing his helmet on the ice either. That's a game is kind of get the kid out of there. That's how you play fucking hockey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get these animals off the ice. Yeah, get your animals <laughs> off the ice. <laughs> no rules against a knuckle puck, though. It's true. It's just someone that should check you before you have yes, time to Yes, you see. should get knocked out. Right. Now, uh, you know, uh, Buddy was not young when he was making this movie. No. Even director Chris Martin Smith, he says, and I quote, he was not young. Well, there you have it. Yep. That's the direct- straight from the director's right. mouth. Right. They, they would have to put makeup on his snout. Oh, because he was gray. Oh, he was gray. And yeah, salt you know. and pepper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Jesus. And by the end of shooting, though, he'd scored over 20,000 points during filming. Oh God! Which was all, all two pointers. As yeah, as pointed out to me, uh, he did this uh, uh, when he was only eight. Right. You know, LeBron was twenty nine. He, as was pointed out to me, this was one hundred and forty seven dog years before LeBron James did. <laughs> was it. this pointed out to you by my friend? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. The movie had a three million dollar budget. It made twenty four and a half million. Ah, uh, ushering in. Dog movies. Right, right, yeah. Uh huh. Now, you know, shortly after filming, a lump was found in the hind leg of Buddy. No. It was examined, and he had a rare synovial cell sarcoma cancer. And the words of Chris, 
Boy, life can be rough sometimes. <laughs> oh, my God. No, 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 So what they did is they amputated his leg. What? Yeah, uh-huh, Straight it, up? Yeah, man. You know, but uh, it was a surgery was a success. He had a long career ahead of him. It came all the way off? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> surgery, was, he had a long career ahead of him, uh, and he died six months later. Right, right. Or in dog years, three and a half dog years <laughs> later. <laughs> Now, Kevin DeChico, as you know, he didn't stop there, but he had nine kids, so Kevin said, let's keep making these dog movies. Jesus Christ. One of these movies was called Snow Buddies. It was made in Vancouver, B.C. Disney imported 20 underage golden retrievers under eight weeks, which is before you're supposed to take them from their mother because they're suspect to disease. And oh. 15 of these dogs caught disease. Oh, my God. Three of them had to be euthanized, and two others died later. So instead of no animals were harmed, they had to put human monitor... Human monitored animal action. Oh my god. This doesn't hold the record for most animals dead, which I believe uh, currently might be The Hobbit, with 27 animals died during filming of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what kind of animals? Chickens, horses, dogs, cats, you know, the usual. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Mm hmm. How many, you know, how many fucking chickens died for craft services that day? Exactly. Right, Fuck right. Them. Fuck right, them. Right, yeah. This movie's got to get made, dude. Yeah, you know, animals yeah. die during movies. Ben-Hur, 1925, five horses and one stuntman. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's and a hell, they hell that, of a shoot. that one HBO show because they couldn't stop killing That's horses? That's right, the one about Lucky, horses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where they were racing horses. Yeah, yeah. it's just like, how are you guys fucking up killing horses so bad? Yeah. yeah. Well... This isn't the most famous movie, Death, and that's something I'm going to tease, because I'll be covering it next week. Hey! You know, a lion bit Melanie Griffith in a movie. Yeah, but she was right. also living with one. Yeah, that was the crazy part. They made a movie, she got all these fucking lions around, her dad's like, hey! So, my friend Chris uh, was in a band with me, and when I moved out here to Los Angeles, uh, he gave me a going away present, which was a VHS clamshell copy of Air Bud. Uh huh, clamshell. Right. And then, it made a ruckus as you opened it? Yeah, later on he's like, you know, like, I'm in here like a year and a half or something. And he's like, give me your address. What comes in the mail? Airbud Golden Receiver, right? That's the sequel to That's the, the, the sequel. Smash oh, yes. Hit. Right, which, which, which opens with Airbud like catching a pass or something, and the kid goes, You can play football too? Which is like, yeah, the dog understands that the rules of football. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. I- Button hook. And then he started sending me autographed pictures of Air Bud. Um, like, did they have paw prints? No, no, it was like the kid and the dog <laughs> catching balls, and he's like multiple autographed pictures of Air Bud through the mail. Is Chris the one that sent us the uh, petrified bread? No, no, no. That's that was Dodger. That was, that was okay, Dodger. Okay, yeah, okay. no, these are totally different you psychopaths. Have, you have <laughs> fucking weird fucking friends. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite things uh, is you know the the Air Bud thing became you know like the. The buddies became like the movies after that, and it was you know um, they they ran wild with the thing. You know? Oh yeah, I think he played hockey and high lie and shit. So I was talking to Kevin Anderson from the Bleak and Review podcast one uh-huh. time, and he was talking about all all, all of the pups go uh, the the Airbud you know descendants. They go to space in a movie. It's called Space Buddies, uh-huh. and uh, Kevin Anderson pointed out he's like they should have called that one No Airbud, <laughs> No Air Space. Yes. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's low gravity. Uh, yeah. And very I told low, that very jo- low gravity I told, joke. I, I told that joke to Chris, and he he was mortified. <laughs> he was really, 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 really put out by that joke. Hmm. But I love it. I think it's a great joke. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kevin Anderson. Shout out to the pun master. Yeah. Kevin no Air Bud is genius. Um, that's very insane. Mm-hmm. I can't believe Chris is still continuing the gag so much that he emailed you a profile. Mm-hmm. Of Airbud, that is um, you know, the the medium is Airbud, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. He told me he he was gonna he had a thing and he's like it's really stupid, and I was like okay, and he's like I was like tell me, and he's like he's like I don't want to tell you, and he's like can I have Matt's email address? <laughs> brilliant, Chris. Brilliant. <laughs> so, so that's my friend Chris, who's a total psycho. Mm-hmm. Way to go, buddy. Um, but I didn't know uh, at all that it it started as a stupid Petrix thing. That's actually yep. very interesting. Wow. Well, you know, that's Petrix for you. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out most movies, uh, fucking uh, dumb Petrix. Yeah, this started with some conversation where he, he started bringing up stupid movies like that, like Airbud, and the other one was uh, MVP, Most Valuable Primate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, uh, fucking Nymphomaniac, that's just stupid Petrix, too. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. Well, they are animals. Uh, this, guys, I'm going to tell you a little something, something. 
It's got everything you said, John. This one's got everything, dude. It's got violent suicide, oh, it's got yes. organized crime, and it's got porno. Wow. wow. Isn't that the best? <laughs> it's great. And not only that, but, but it ties in to an extremely recent edition <gasps> of Profiles and Eccentricity. No. This is the first time I think uh, I've ever done that where I've, um, I've wanted to piggyback because um, your episode... Mm-hmm. About uh, Matt's episode, Yukio Mishima. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, uh, a Japanese Japanese author who mm-hmm. uh, tried to uh, basically do a coup d'état yes. of the Japanese government. I was, um, was going to say fitness freak. Mm, yes, yeah. um, he uh, was a far right uh, Japanese nationalist. Yes, and he, a follower of his is the person I want to talk about today. Uh-huh. This young man, uh, he was. Uh, Mitsuyasu Meno, uh-huh. and he was uh, he was born in 1947, right? Okay. So he's post-war Japan. Yes. And he uh, he's a artist. He's an actor. Mm-hmm. He goes to UC Berkeley, takes acting classes there, and he comes back and um, he gets married uh, at a young age, gets divorced. He's sort of troubled. He um, gets into a second marriage later on, has a child, ends in divorce again. Um, he later on attempts suicide, kind of like in the early seventies. So he's he's a very troubled person. Yeah, um, but, uh, not not Harry Carey. Yeah, he didn't. Com- try no, no, no. He he, uh, he was actually like I missed. He was <laughs> yeah. somewhere oh, like shit. Out, someone else. Out, cry for help, dude. Outdoors, like fucking like by the side of the road, and just took a bunch of pills and somebody yeah, like and found was, him. Uh, <laughs> this okay. isn't the suicide forest, right? This exactly. Is, this is yes. Just a road. Um, but he. He beca- he came under the influence of uh, extremely right wing and ultra nationalist uh, Japanese politics and the writings specifically of our profile Yukio Mishima, and uh, he he got really into that stuff. And one of the one of the like the the big right wing was like that was public uh, was kind of like in say like the hundred and twenty thousand population type. Of members, right? But the people that were far right, that that shit was like Yukio Mishima was extremely secretive, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that was numbering more, they think, in the like early seventies time of like ten to thirty thousand. Okay, but you didn't talk about it, and it didn't come up until people like Yukio Mishima uh, came out and tried to do his big, you know, mm-hmm. takeover of the government. So these things would kind of exist in the underground. And so that's where this actor was getting involved. Now, he's also um, not really getting any acting work, and he goes into Japanese pink films. Pink films, John? Pink. uh, Pink for the fleshy genitals. Oh. Now, it's my understanding from my extensive research Mm -hmm. online is that Japanese genitals are pixelated. Yes, yes. It's a good point, Aaron. Yes. Um, and then I think, like, you know, sometimes they're not. Uh, yes, that is also true. Right. Well, uh, uh, now I don't know what to think. You're going to have to explain. Well, I <laughs> mean... Peak, peak I, films are jet point pornos. Well, it's it's supposed to be that uh, what's taboo is the uh, pubic hair. Yes, so isn't it's not, that weird? It's like, you know, like jizz will not be pixelated. No, you can show jizz flying out of a tentacle drowning some poor lady. Right, but right. But if you show a little... Uh, Muff, but they don't yes. shave their pubes, right? Huh? Yeah. Um, Seems like an fact. easy solution. But I think if they do, then they also don't censor it. It's it's really about the pubic hair for some reason. No, it's like, not for a lot of people it is. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so he gets involved in these pink films. Now these pink films, I was really into horror movies, and I would come up against some of this stuff, and it would it would scare the hell out of me because a lot of it would be like. Uh, House of the Bamboo Dolls, or or, or whatever. This and is Japanese horror. Japanese, it's basically like like rapey porn, hmm. and and that's what I always thought that pink films were was like, you know how there's a lot of rapey vibes in Japanese porn. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes in the title. Right. Yes. Yes. O- oftentimes. Uh, so I was I was I I thought that that's that, but pink was just a, a broad term for everything that was porn in Uh in Japan and they would uh, also have little subsections that were interesting like there's a subsection called pinky violence you ever heard of pinky violence no but I can kind of guess it's actually where that would be like 
the sort of feminist flip. It's like the uh, women have the power and are now like attacking the men. I so like it's, that. It's a. It's like a. You know the the tortured of like kind of like lashed out back mm-hmm. you know? testicular smithereening right of course yes. the technical terms yes. yeah but it's... there would be you know mainstream movies that were in this thing that weren't so explicit porny you know there was a lot of softcore stuff and that's where this guy resided um, now there was a very famous European softcore film in the 70s you may be familiar with called Emmanuel Emmanuel yes which spawned like Air Bud uh, <laughs> numerous sequels. Yes, and copycats. <laughs> yes, and I think involved some animals in one of them. Yes, right. Space, what the, Emmanuel, yeah. I believe. Emmanuel yes. in space, yes. Emmanuel in space, yeah. There was, um... Emmanuel scared stupid. There was, Emmanuel, there, there was, Emmanuel goes to camp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like, you know, Emmanuel, if, if, you, if you're not familiar, was, uh, like one of these movies that was really stupid. It was kind of, uh... Lampooned very good in, in Seinfeld in a movie called Rochelle Rochelle, mm-hmm. and, oh, it, and it's okay. a it's about like a girl that's gonna marry some guy and she's beautiful and he's old and wealthy and he's like, oh, you're not enough of a total psychosexual maniac yet. So go out in the world and you know be seduced by sex, become and, a hypervert, right? Mm. Exactly, uh, fall into the realm of hyperversion. <laughs> And so it's it's a softcore movie with you know some you know but it's like, a, it's a classic. It is. It, a- it, it, it also became very very big in mainstream cinema. Yes, it was it was a, a big deal throughout the world, um, very much like the American porno film Deep Throat, mm-hmm. which broke. It's a hardcore porn film that yeah. broke into the mainstream. Johnny Carson was talking about it. Yes. Now in Japan, Mitsuyasu Meno was in. Tokyo Emmanuel, <laughs> as well as Tokyo Deep Throat. Oh. There was Tokyo Deep Throat? There was also Tokyo Deep now, Throat. Now, Tokyo Emmanuel was not Emmanuel in Tokyo. No, 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 This no, no, was no. just their version of yes, Emmanuel. Exactly. Got and it. instead of uh, a woman uh, uh, exploring sexuality, it was more about... Uh, you know, men using her. <laughs> it, yeah. was, it was totally checks out. It took away mm. all of the empowering aspects of Manuel, and instead, you know, made it like yeah. creepy. Uh, you know, Japanese guy <laughs> porn. Got her head just done in a subway. Yeah, right, right. Much got like it. the car in Tokyo Drift. Right. Yeah. Yes. More of a, she was more of a vehicle. Yeah. For men to get inside of mm. and right. Yeah. Abuse on the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, also same same kind of thing with uh, with Tokyo Deep Throat. Uh, this guy. Uh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with Deep Throat, the idea with Deep Throat is is that oh god, please this yes. this uh, this poor woman uh, has portrayed her- by Linda Lovelace. Yes, um, who became a, a famous anti porn activist afterwards uh, because she was horribly treated by uh, uh, that, her ma- Watching manager. Deep Throat is basically watching the forced sex on right. Linda Lovelace, but she did. I mean, she was. She did great. It was it was just so crazy to me that that was the porn that people went apeshit about. It's 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 it, when you look back at it, having watched a lot of porn as we have. Oh, well, now it's... There, it, there's something about it where you're like, why why was it this one? You know, yeah. why was it this one? Everyone went apeshit about. Well, you know, but the, but, the, but, 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 but please continue the, the premise. Of... Well, the premise is that she has her G spot in her throat. Yeah, she does her 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 clitoris is in the back of her throat. Oh, it's the uh, clitoris? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so... Harry Reams is the doctor, and he, right. he opens it up, mm, and he goes, yeah. oh, oh, there it is. It's hanging out in the back of your throat. Right. And then she finally starts throating guys, and then fireworks goes off, and she has an orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Who's, who says men men can't find the clitoris? <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Harry right. Reams. Right. Doctor, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Very good Famous doctor, Harry Reams. Um, in this one, a man... Makes her transplant her own clitoris to her throat. Yep. Right. That sounds exactly like Tokyo Deep Throat. And immediately after, to test to make sure the surgery was successful, shoves a banana down her throat. And, uh, Wait, peeled or? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, a peeled one? I just, you never know. Right. And, she just uh, took that banana raw talk? So, in the th- while he does this, she's in the middle of enjoying a nice sip of wine. Right, <laughs> and so she she's drooling wine out of her mouth while this guy shoves, and she's you know having an orgasm, and the the wine uh, dripping down her chin is supposed to um, symbolize the loss of the her. hymen. It's her, yes. yeah, that's very wow. avant garde stuff. Very insane. Probably a better movie than Deep Throat. It sounds like mm. it's yeah. com- completely completely bananas, and this was all done. <laughs> it is bananas. Yes, John's bananas and wine. <laughs> he has this. It's bananas all the way down. Yeah, and um, piss and shit. So. He he's involved with all this stuff, and he's he's getting involved with this this extremely um, 
you know, uh, insane right wing uh, culture, which is very, very. So underground. he's in, <laughs> he's in this right wing political subculture. Yeah, and also in um, pink m- motion pictures. Yes, and he's also, uh, you know, uh, deeply troubled. Yeah, he can. He he, he twice twice divorced, right. and uh, one failed suicide under his. That's that's right, belt. and uh, probably probably wouldn't be doing the pinks if he was a, a successful actor or a successful mm. suicide. Or, he would or, definitely or. not be doing the pinks. Right, he'd be dead. So now there was a meeting of the ultra nationalists that he went to, and. Um, Featured at the meeting was this uh, Song of the Race, which was a composition by a right-wing leader by the name of Yoshio Kadama. Okay. Now, Yoshio Kadama was a guy that was imprisoned uh, during the war as a, a war criminal, the Second World War. So, uh, he was imprisoned by the United States. The United States. They, took, they, they put him in, they tried him, and they put him in a whatever yes. for being a war criminal. What did he do? Um, I, I, it doesn't say what he did. Some fucked up shit, I bet. Um, it doesn't say, but he, um, then is kind of like, in post-war Japan, kind of like a, like a CIA agent, almost. And he- For the U.S.? Kind of for the U.S., but he's still an, an ultra-right, uh, Japanese nationalist, but he's, he's kind of like- He's ri- out, he's out, he's free. He's free, and he's kind of riding this weird line in an almost, um, the departed way, where he's like- right. He he's largely responsible for the resurgence of the yakuza. No shit. Yeah, I mean that's that sounds like one of the the blowbacks when the U.S. government wanted to make sure the war the, there was a stronger war footing in Japan and put put the the nationalists back in power in, yeah, in many places. But part of it was like sort of what you were saying in your profile. Uh, it was really about who can we get to shut down the communists? Right. 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 And now this guy's got Yakuza muscle behind him, right. and suddenly the coal factory workers or coal miners are going on strike, and he's, like, sending the Yakuza to, like, bust that shit up. Yeah. And not only that, but he's very responsible for um, the main right-wing party that stayed in power for, like, 50 years after that in Japan. You know there was one party in power in Japan after the war for, like, 50 fucking years? Like, starting in the 50s, and then they lasted, like, forever and ever and ever, and then, like... Wow. I think maybe like in the eighties it changed. Probably it was more like the nineties, two thousands. No shit. Yeah, it was the first time they were like kind of having, you know, there there was no, you at least wouldn't admit publicly in Japan that there was any homeless people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in like a kind of pride thing, and then like some of that stuff, and you know, for a large. Por- portion that was true but right. of course there's always some kind of yeah. problem but then like the problems became a little bit bigger and that was the then first they time ignore it. they ever right. uh, voted out this uh, right wing government uh, that was the first time they ever lost yeah if, if there's a stink you put a lid on it sometimes that means just not talking about it right. as opposed to dealing with it but you know this is 1971 this guy is uh, is at a, a meeting of these ultra nationalists he's brought back the Yakuza to what year is this? 1971 Okay, and uh, this you know porn actor Misiyasu is there and uh, Yoshio Kodama puts out the Song of the Race, and it's all about overthrowing the government, restoration of Japan's World War II imperial policies. Um, this is, and it's a new song that he wrote. Yeah, it's a new song he wrote, and it was a, it was a big deal. Um, it was like he. Uh, I'm, t- I'm thinking it's not disco. No, 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 no. It's it's like an anthem for yeah. the oh, nation. Oh, 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 yeah, like that type of shit. Yeah. Uh, so. The thing is, is that he's he's into this stuff, but he's also still kind of intertwined with the CIA. Kadama. Yeah, Yoshio Kadama. Mm. So later on, he's indicted in a huge scandal with our company here, Lockheed, which was yeah. it, it, you know, uh, but he, Blackbird. They make you know aerospace. One of one of the great war machines of our time. Uh, God yeah, bless it. It, wasn't it also? Um, um, uh, oh, who am I thinking of? The the fucking maniac DiCaprio played. Didn't he work for Lockheed? Wasn't that? Lockheed? Oh, you talking about Howard Hughes? Howard Hughes. Well, Hugh, Hughes had his own. He but he may uh, he may have had some uh, stuff to do. Right. With, I mean, yeah, they he probably had his they probably all over the industry. Shit, yeah. But they were also the number one plane manufacturer during the World War. Like that was taking down Japanese planes. Yeah. So when this scandal came out, that he, this guy from the Yakuza. And also the ultra-nationalist right-wing underground that people didn't even know publicly existed, and then it came out during this scandal that it did. Um, they were shocked, 
and and they couldn't believe that uh, there was first of all this political corruption going on. This guy was influencing the Japanese government um, with his right wing party that he kind of kept in power to specifically buy Lockheed stuff because of his old American CIA connections. And it was a massive scandal in Japan. Because they weren't allowed to have a, a war machine in Japan after the war. Right, exactly. So buy you a, buy American. <laughs> right, right, right. And, <laughs> yeah. and that was the deal. So um, that was a huge, huge fucking thing. And he had a stroke around this time, Yoshi Okudama, and he was... Uh, you know, basically under house arrest, and he's at his house, and he's got a he's got a bunch of yakuza guys guarding him all the time. Now, Mitsuyasu views this as a massive betrayal because these guys were all about going back to the old samurai code and yeah. of bushido, and mm -hmm. and it was and he was like, you are taking money from American Lockheed Martin to get them more money and totally selling out Japan. Like this doesn't is doesn't sound very ultra nationalist to me. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It was really just for Yoshio, I think that he, he was um he was he it was just the anti-communism that the Americans wanted him for. Yeah. And he was very successful at doing that. And not only that, but he also kept a lot of peace on the streets between the rival yakuza gangs. He actually made them allies. And stuff, and had huh. everybody working together. So this guy is like kind of behind the scenes, one of the most important people in post-war Japan. No shit. From the criminal level to like the most uh, fringe politics level to the mainstream political class. Mm -hmm. This guy is behind everything. Yeah. He's a puppet master. Isn't that completely insane? Yes, it's nuts. So our and, man, and he knows this pink guy. Uh, not not really, not really. He okay. doesn't. They, uh, they they just kind of ran in the same circles. Okay, you know. Got it. Uh, Got it. So this, uh, you know, and, and and scandals in Japan weren't even like you know much of a thing. Like that was you know anything. A lot of things after were like any scandal. It was about shame, you know. Like mm -hmm. as a you know a friend of mine, uh, Chris, you know his mm -hmm. his wife went to Japan and she was she was talking about you know like if you're walking down the street and somebody drops something, it's rude to help them. Mm. Mm. Like if I dropped all my books and they scattered everywhere, it would be rude of me. To you know, go down and help them because it's bringing embarrassment to them. And yet, in America, that's how you meet your the the love of your life. Right, right, Whoops. right. Yeah, it's a, it's called a meet cute. <laughs> but a lot of times, you know, in 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 Japan, this you know, this, these positions of pride and stuff like that. Like if you were at a company, and and there was some massive corruption that was found out or something like that, it would it wouldn't be uncommon for guys to do seppuku and, and harikari yeah. and jump out the window, like because it was. You've disgraced yourself, and yeah. you know pride is everything, and stuff like that. There is a there is a term in Japanese specifically dedicated to working yourself to death. Right. Yeah. Like it's just a word for a commonplace. Sure. Like the Germans have. Yeah. Words for so many. Everybody's got words. <laughs> they were, it's a, it's a, yeah, they have different words for everything. Mm -hmm. Steve Martin joke. So as as part of as part of his acting stuff, um, Mitsuyasu in, in one of his most famous scenes in Tokyo Emmanuel, he uh, makes love to the star while flying a plane, right? Makes love. Yes. <laughs> yes. He mm -hmm. yes he makes beautiful love to this woman. And Wait. He, while he's flying the plane. Yeah. Lockheed. I don't know. I don't know. But he autopilot. But he he learns he learns to fly for this kind of thing. So, <laughs> so he learns to fly for well, the role. He learns to fly for yeah for acting basically. But is he really flying while he fucks this broad? I don't know. Probably not. I'm uh, guessing. I'm going like, to guess. That's like Tom Cruise level stuff. Yeah, right, I, right. I would guess there's some movie magic going on there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how did how did you die? How did he die? Hey, he's fucking someone while he's flying a plane. <laughs> right. He's, so he like he takes this betrayal by Yoshio Kodama so personally, Kamikaze. that he starts flying around his neighborhood, right, and like che Kamikaze. and checking the Kamikaze. place out, like scouting the whole place in a plane. Yeah, and then. What? He gets a couple of friends, and they go to the Tokyo airport, and he rents this plane, and he is dressed up like a kamikaze pilot. Rising suns all over him. He tells everybody, he's like, we're doing a movie about uh, the kamikazes. Uh, these guys are going to take one plane. I'm going to take this one. No way. Yeah. Does he get all messed up like the real kamikazes? <laughs> no, he takes the plane, and um, he goes up, and uh, his friends, uh, he tells his friends, um, I have some business in Setagaya, which is the neighborhood that Yoshio no. lives in, and 
they have a camera, right? So they're like filming him. They follow him over to the neighborhood. The other planes? The other planes. The, 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 then these guys are just like kamikazes too. Um, While they're f- filming this guy. Right. In the neighborhood with no airport. Right. And an <laughs> amateur it. radio operator reported that at 9.50 a.m. he heard Mano call out JA3551, his, you know. Call sign or yeah, tail, nice. tail. The number, number of his plane. And he says emotionally, sorry I haven't replied for a long time. Long live the emperor. <sighs> he hits the second floor veranda of the guy's house. Good Are day. you fucking kidding me? <laughs> he kamikazes into Yoshio Kodama's house. <laughs> right? He fucking flies the plane right in. No. He dies in the crash. The crash causes a fire. Yoshio Kodama is like n- not in that part of the house. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a big house. Yeah, y- Yakuza uh, bodyguards are there and uh, like two of them get hurt, not even dead. <laughs> Right. Do the rest of them fight the plane? No, the rest of them fight the press that are arriving <laughs> to report it. The press starts showing up and, it's and like chopping them up. And the fucking Yakuza bodyguards start beating the shit out of the press. Jesus. And the police And they put a lid on it. The police completely put a lid on it. Yeah. They well, thought it stinks. They no, they totally they they tell the press we told you not to excite the young men. They do, like they defend the Yakuza bodyguards. You see what happens <laughs> when the press show up? It really goes to show you how pervasive like the Yakuza like oh. the fucking cops show up and take their side yeah, we over told the you. press. Well, you were asking for it. <laughs> That's right. So, it uh, was- John, so John, let's just real quick. This porno guy. Yeah. This porno guy doesn't like the betrayal. Yes. Of this um Political um, criminal, yeah, yeah, you know, influencer. Uh, yes, or uh, what do you want to call him? Uh, agent provocateur. Ooh, yeah, nice. Yeah, but it was almost more about uh, uh, non provocative because it was all about stability. Sure, okay. Uh, stability with the Americans, stability with the with, with the criminal yeah. gangs, stability with the yeah. political party, and also no trace of of communism. I see, I see. Okay. You know, so uh, he says we're filming a movie. Yeah, about kamikazes. About kamikazes, and he crashes the airplane into the guy's house. That's a good fucking actor. And that's commitment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John, is there footage? You know, I don't know. Uh, I I did not check. We got to find that out. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a great Instagram post. I'll tell yeah, you. yeah, yeah. What's the limit? Thirty seconds now. <laughs> um. So, pe- people. I assume he dies. Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, John, his guts are hanging everywhere. Uh, like he's all charred up. Like he looks, he looks so fucked up when they you... find him. His guts are like hanging all over the place, and he's like, like burnt bacon. Like it's like fuck? spinning on the propeller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all fucked up, and like nobody in the house is hurt. It's like, was know, he wearing a seatbelt? I, 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 you know, I really doubt it. Ah, there's um, no airbags in those. I things mean, he either. had really cool clothes on. Well, yeah, yeah, that doesn't hurt. Uh, but. You know, in Japan, they were like, how crazy is it that we, we, we're we kind of being forced to reckon with, there's still a part, even if it's a small part, of our population that still wants all this shit that we thought we were done with. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if, if it was suddenly, like that here? No, or no, or, or no <laughs> if suddenly there was like a German guy doing a fucking suicide attack yelling, hail Hitler, you know, like. Yeah. Well, something, it'd have to be something very German. Right. The kamikaze thing was uniquely Japanese, yeah. right? But just these things like of like it, it being so hidden and then coming up out of nowhere from both the coup from you know uh, uh, Mishimo mm-hmm. and then you know Matsuyasu is like, what the fuck? Like what? Are, what's going on here? Like fucking artists, man. Just and like yeah, I, I got to do it this way. It's <laughs> got to be sit, right. like this. It's the another like, Hitler. Yeah, you know, like another fucking artist. Yeah, these guys. Uh, if he was a better artist, he would have yeah. gotten to school for it. Yeah. Yeah. He was a much, much better uh, autocrat dictator monster than he was artist. <laughs> and that's why he was so good at it. Yeah, These yeah. guys were better artists. Yeah. The, clearly. Because right. they failed at their coups and yeah. sending a message in general. Yeah. Stick to the art, bro. Yeah, yeah. stick to having sex yeah, with the make, woman in the plane. Make, uh, you know... Uh, Da- da- Tokyo Debbie Does Dallas. <laughs> <Yeah>. Tokyo Taboo. <laughs> Tokyo Taboo. Yes. Yes, John. Very good. 
<laughs> Tokyo Taboo too. <laughs> Tokyo Young Dumb and Full of Cum. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Like Tokyo classic. Don't Waste to Taste It. Fuck <laughs> 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 so I don't know how we can't I don't know how we can't what? call this episode the porno kamikaze killer. Yeah, yes, I, this yes. is porno kamikaze killer. Right. Um because uh, uh, this guy was even more Tokyo samurai. Tokyo cum fart tsunami. Tokyo porno samurai killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, so gosh. stupid. God, so this insane. ties into many episodes, John. Did you know that? Yeah, man. I was. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, fuck, it, it, it's the Yakuza, and it's porn, and it's it's fucking another violent murder-suicide attempt. World War II. It, it's that's yeah. A, Please continue. This Aren't you glad a- I deleted this so you guys wouldn't find it? Yes, I love surprises. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Now this this to me is the part where I was like, ah! Oh, there's oh, more? There's more? No, it's just it's just context. You yeah. know how I am. Yeah, I know. You're nuts. It's, You're yeah, it's, it's, this 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 is the fucking part where I went ape shit and I was like, oh man, dude, I can't wait to tell these dudes about this shit. <laughs> just it's 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 just you'll get it, right? Oh, John's face is red. Mm-hmm. So, uh <laughs> the director general for the training of the Japan- Japanese self-defense forces said that Mano's act was tainted by self-serving motives, not in self-sacrifice for the country. Now, this guy, this uh, Kaichi Ito, the director general, he trained kamikaze guys during the war. So he's speaking at it from like this level, like, yeah, those I, guys were my friends. Yeah, I know kamikazes. This guy's no kamikaze. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You, sir, are no kamikaze. Right. He goes... <laughs> Mano was performing an egotistical grandstand play to win publicity, not unlike Mishima's suicide. Uh, no shit. Yeah. He calls both of them out. He's like, this is self-serving bullshit. This isn't about Japan. Yeah. This is about your ego. Right? He goes, Plus, he also wasn't on meth. Yeah. He goes, both were showing off to the world. Nevertheless... Ito commended Mano's technique in the attack, <laughs> commenting that if Mano's intent had been to kill Kodama, he could not have known where he would be located within the house. Ito said the bombing was, quote, very skillful. I give him the highest marks on that score. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. His motivation, suspect. Execution, impeccable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly. Again, once again, I know these dudes. <laughs> and he, we give two grades for Kamikaze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, hard. Heart and head. <laughs> this guy had no heart, oh. but boy, did he have a mind for suicide bombing. Boy, did it look good. <laughs> I would have loved to have this man die on my watch. Is that fucking if, that is nuts. if only he had been born 20 years earlier. God yeah, he would have. And the most famous scene this man ever shot is him fucking a lady in a cockpit. Well, <laughs> John, we could all be so lucky. Of all, of all the things. Yeah. Of all the things, he's, yeah, he's fucking a lady in the cockpit of an airplane. Jesus Christ! And oh. then, so the movies get a cult following. Of oh. course, we gotta watch these together tonight. <laughs> yeah. When, when you said cockpit, I forgot about plane, and I was like, <laughs> "What is this porn thing with <laughs> a bunch of dicks?" <laughs> the, what's the banana? <laughs> and I think, so, how do they get bananas in Japan? <laughs> Post war, see what happens when, when <laughs> the, the U- U.S. Hege- hegemony happens. You get fucking dull bananas in Japan. You're welcome, Tokyo. Oh my god. Oh my Avocado, Tokyo et banana, Tokyo avocado. Wait, so 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 th- even Yoshio Kodama was impressed by the bravery of the attack. <laughs> he said it publicly. He was the like, guy who we tried to kill. Yeah, and he kind of admitted that... Pretty good. That You miss, but pretty good. Yeah, he was like taken out in a blanket. He was all stroked out. It's nice to know people care, though. Well, I mean, it, he was just like... He kind of admitted later, like, yeah, I guess people were mad because I was taking money from Lockheed, which made so much money destroying Japan. And it's like, yes, <laughs> that's exactly why. But he was all stroked out and like, oh, tar- tar- yeah, yeah, tar- yeah, yeah, yeah. He was take, taken out in a blanket, and he lived. He lived until eighty four, where he had a second stroke, where he died very peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't die in a fiery gut heap like this okay. other fucking psycho. <laughs> yeah, he died peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of his face dropped. <laughs> and she, he's really frowning today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it was, it was, um, it, it, and then, like, uh, the, it was, like, 
it kind of it got a cult following, like I said. Mm. And one of the things that was written in like a Chilean writer's uh, 2003 novel, The Dancer and the Thief. In the novel, the lead character uh, meets a love interest in front of a Japanese movie theater, and it's a man. Tokyo Emmanuel is playing. Uh, starring Mitsuyasu Meno. Wow. Yeah. So it like made its way into pop culture and sure. stuff. And uh, but I mean, I was also you know, it, I, was it like their um, uh, like uh, their uh, true romance? True romance. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's not Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, it's Tokyo, Detroit. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, good. But I mean, I was just like, what a fucking amazing story. This guy fucking kamikaze. Hell yeah. Dude. Somebody he feels like betrayed like a fringe cause, you know. It'd be like here if, uh, you know, like the Civil War reenactors or whatever. <laughs> right, right. Someone from Ken Burns' Civil War. <laughs> the yeah. my, my dearest Elizabeth, <laughs> I regret to inform you that I am going on a mission from which I will not return. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, and, and, and then, I mean, just this guy, Yoshio Kodama, is like almost like a fucking profile himself. Yeah. Because, hey, well, you know, mm-hmm. try it out. You know, he's he's... He's at the backbone of all this. I mean, the resurgence of the Yakuza and then also like the taming of the Yakuza. And, and in coordination with the government the U- and U.S. corporate interests. Yeah, you know, somebody, you know, the U.S. is definitely, you know, post war looking over Germany and Japan's shoulders. Yeah, just, you know, um, yeah, we just want to make sure. Backseat driving and. Right. Uh, just, well, you've got the, the Chinese are over here and, well, they're Chinese. And, <laughs> right, um, right. It'd be great if, uh, you know, me, you fellas with the uh, full neck to ankle tattoos would just kind of keep things in order here. Yeah, I think I would like to know more about. Um, I don't know if you were intrigued by this when you did your uh, profile on Mishima, but like the the. Well, where did the heavy anti communist thing come from in Japan? I mean, I know. Well, I, I think it came the US. From, from the U.S. They, I mean, yeah, uh, but it seems like these imperial guys were already tilted that way. Well, well sure, sure. Right. I mean, there, there's well, obviously antagonism and and distrust towards the Japanese. Right. I mean, the Chinese, and yeah. they're they're the largest. Uh, I mean, thanks to I don't know, I don't know how much influence Russia had to it, but but certainly I assume a large amount. Right. You know, they they probably became some sort of. Uh, um, a uh, forward base for Russian communism, and, sure. and so if they have Japanese and Chinese already didn't like, you know, I I, I know um, uh, Chinese people our age, yeah, who don't like Japanese people. Oh yeah, it still lingers. They, oh, all of sure. that. Yeah. Still I wonder lingers. why. Yeah, exactly. And so, and it's one of those things. That's, and it's not. It, there's so many things that are very uniquely American, and I, and I think about things like the reason that uh, they don't like white. White folks are are worried about minorities is because it's always like, well, if they had the power we had, they would do what we did to them. Yeah, sure. and so, so for like the Japanese, only it's better like, and cheaper, <laughs> right? So for the Japanese, there's a thing like we did some terrible things. If they have power, we're due right. to have terrible things done to us. Sure, sure. Right. And also, something that didn't I I didn't have time to mention in the the Mishima episode is that so the United States. Dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan. Twelve. Right, two, and two actually. Two. Well, uh, I'm, I'm getting to this. <laughs> and and because of the uh, how the news was back, like the the head of J- heads of Japan didn't know what happened. Mm. They heard there was a bomb, but there was so much disinformation out there. They didn't know what really happened, so they had to send a scout, someone out there to someone had go to check go check it out. Someone had to ride three days. And then find out, and then see that an entire city was gone, and send word back. Right. And during this time, the United States is saying to them, "Hey, you're, you you have to surrender," and and these are the reasons why. And one of the reasons why was because the United States wanted to surrender quickly, because they knew Russia was about to invade Japan. Ah. And in fact, Russia called up Japan, and they said, "Hey, we have a treaty." Uh, for your or, 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 or no, they said we're, they said we're declaring war on you, right? And Japan said when, and Russia said we've already started. Jeez. Wow! And so yesterday, there wow. were there were many motivations, and, and and odds are Japan probably would have surrendered if we hadn't dropped the second bomb, right? Uh, but it was one of the it, it between the bombs and the fact that Russia was going to be coming in, it every it, it all ha- it had to happen. Much quicker than anyone right. thought of beforehand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
This guy, uh, Kojama, he he basically made like 175 million in his time. Fuck. Yeah. And and he, while he was in, he was imprisoned by the U.S. as just a suspected war criminal. That was that was that was all. He didn't actually do anything. He was probably in some position of power, and they well, were trying to. Yeah, yeah, and he was also he got into like heroin smuggling, opium smuggling while he was doing all this shit. But while he was. <laughs> <laughs> While he was like fucking, oh, I uh, love guys like that. Dude, total psychopath. <laughs> he wasn't in prison, dude. He was in training. That's what happened. <laughs> yes, they yes. saw some guy who had talent. They brought him in, and they said, "All right, now you work for us." Because, well, uh, you know what a Geiger meter is? Yeah, or whatever the fucking measures radi- like radiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. why you work for us now. Well, and it's also those fringe guys that have an agenda. It's like it's don't very, let good talent go to waste, dude. But also Operation also, Paperclip. Also, also ambition. Also ambition. <laughs> yeah, right? you seem like a real young, nice, headstrong upstart. Because the far the far right shit he was involved with in Japan was also going to you know a, about assassinating leaders that weren't far right enough while Japan was still large and in charge, like while the war was still going on. Uh-huh. He was he was trying to do that and got in prison for that. Uh-huh. But also at the same time. This is all occupied Korea time. And then he's getting involved with heroin. So it's like he's on the fringes politically and getting involved in crime at the same time. In comes America, grab him, and it's like... Also have a backpack full of heroin. Right, right, right. Okay, so you have, you have uh, you know, underground connections and political ambitions. God, I love guys like that, dude. Isn't that insane? You're, you're, ta- you're on the take both ways. I love it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it, but it, it also it. reeks of of how far it can go wrong with like an Osama bin Laden type, you know? Like, oh sure, yeah, you let the Joker out, and mm-hmm. you know, right? Well, exactly, he burns a pyramid of cash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like, I mean, it's 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 so crazy. Like, um, it it's still, uh, Mitsuyasu's suicide is, is like, it's weirdly like, it's not it's not going to do anything except, um. I, I guess uh, yes. It's, it's because it's, he's a dumb artist. Yeah, he's, but it's, he's it's, not a political operative. It's a, I guess. I, I guess it's a point of pride. He still believes in the cause. He believes the cause was betrayed. Um, and then you know, I mean, people kind of agreed with him. Even even the target basically agreed with him. You know, sure, sure, sure. But it's not. It, it wasn't going to go anywhere. It wasn't gaining anything. Yeah. Was, all right. Well. You yeah. know, at least Mishima was like, "I'm going to try to take over the government." This yeah. guy's like, "I'm going to kill. Try to kill this one guy that bailed." You know, it's a you know set the goal set a the bar low. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it also it reminds me a little bit of of Christine Chubbuck. Yes, it's that rage. We're on a we are on a, a suicide with a message kick right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. Seems this, seems isn't like, it yeah, suicide yeah. with a message? It's like yeah. it's like I believe in these things, and now they're being corrupted by bullshit. And and I'm gonna kill myself, so you pay attention now. I'm gonna kill myself very loud and proud. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it seems like and maybe or maybe they're not there's footage. I don't know. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, there's definitely footage of Christine Chubbuck. We know it's in a vault. Yes, it is. It is I'm locked. gonna fucking break into that vault. Locked up tight. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna put it on Pornhub. <laughs> because they don't give a shit, right? Yeah, but I mean, him and Chubbuck, I, I, that I, it feels like there's more connections than him and Mishima. Um, yeah, because it feels like a lot of Mishima's mm. uh, his angst about his future was was created by himself. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Chubbuck and um, Chubbuck, oh, Chubbuck was actually doing do, good suicide. Benel- benevolent things and stuff. You know, Chubbuck was was, but, but she wasn't where she wanted to be. No, and she was frustrated by the powers that be. Right. For sure, that's right. something they definitely yeah, yeah, share. Yeah. Working, doing, doing the public, and failing in their personal lives for yes. sure. For yes. sure, failing in their personal lives, and and working in a medium that was maybe not what they set out to do. Right. This guy that went to Berkeley and said he acting. I don't think he wanted to be in Tokyo Deep Throat. Right. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to be in probably Tokyo uh, Maltese Falcon or something. Yeah, yeah, probably, and and it seems like for them it was more of sending a message, and maybe they're like, I I I I don't know how to move forward from where I am now, mm-hmm. uh, so blowing up is an option, mm-hmm. and I will take that option. Well, with Mishima seem more like I am an artist, and I will do an artistic thing, mm-hmm. right? You know? No, uh, I, I see that. I see. I see the the very much closer to Chubbuck. Yeah, Chubbuck, I, I'm going to interview this police officer, and I'm going to how do how do people uh, <laughs> right. shoot themselves in the right. head? What is the best way to do right. that? And, I will learn how to fly. I'm going to learn how to fly a plane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that dumbass cop behind the ear. <laughs> Nobody comes back from that. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, see you later. Let me mess. show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see right here? Oh, the gun's not too heavy. You're done. You're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, you cooked. 
And then this fucking psycho. I mean, I, I like. <laughs> To me, I know it's so fucked up, but the idea of this dude barely damaging a house except for himself and the plane and his guts hanging everywhere with, like, him just all burnt up. He, he so, couldn't hit a stationary yeah. target, so, a so guy with a yeah. stroke. Yeah, and a couple, couple, in a bar. A couple of, like, Yakuza guys with Uzis like, what the fuck? And <laughs> I just going and beating the shit out of reporter. <laughs> ah, shit, the press. Ah. Yeah. And then this dude's in a fucking blanket like, what's going on? I just imagine him <laughs> flying the plane in and he's about to hit that second story floor. And he turns to his left, and he just sees the man in the garden. And he's like, "Ah!" <laughs> <laughs> the last time I was in a plane, I was nutting. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> fuck! Long live the emperor! Oh my god! <laughs> How did you think of your kamikaze? Yet? Well, I was having sex in the plane once. You know, I was really giving it to this <laughs> lady. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pink films. Pink films. Pink, Pink films. films. Yeah. Very good story, John. John, this, wow. so, this story did have everything. It did. It tied into a number of previous profiles. Mm. Um, it was bananas. Yes, mm. yes, oh, yes. I would like to see that. I think we're going to have to put a screenshot of the scene where that young lady's mouth is overflowing with wine and banana. <laughs> I'm going to have to find that. Now, now, that was in Tokyo Deep Throat, yes? That was in Tokyo Deep Throat, of course. Jesus Christ. I really like it a lot. I like it a lot, John. I was laughing my ass off. I mean, it's not funny because it, you know the culture scares me. Um, but, but just how they flipped Emmanuel into like this woman's exploration of her sexuality into like, no, it's a woman exploited by men. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, yeah, it's an exploitation of her sexuality. It's like, it's like you're ripping off this movie. Did you watch it? <laughs> no. no, it's not about. It's not a. It's it's 100 not about that. It's completely a rebellion against that. Or or maybe they did, and then the moment. It gets to a porn director and porn actors. You're like, we can't do this. No, no, just, no, it, fuck it, it, just, just fucking no, do but, whatever. But this we'll was still it very soft core. It was very like in the same league. Like this was not that hardcore. You know, I think even Tokyo Deep Throat wasn't that hardcore. You know, like these are mo much more uh, big release movies yeah. in Japan. You huh. know, uh, I mean, this is up to the listeners to go and and, and right. research so for themselves. Research. This Judge is for not yourself. judge for yourself. This is not like super underground. You know, but also like the Japanese cinema whole the whole Japanese cinema thing is so different because. You can, I mean, Faces of Death was number one at the box office. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, like, the things going in the cinema are so different yeah. that, you know, sort of maybe the boundaries are are, are just different. Yes. You know, um, maybe it's a little hardcore, but not all the way. Um, I kind of zipped through one. There was one on Pornhub, uh, uh, Tokyo Emmanuel. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't look like there was anything too uh, graphic. Right. Um, oh, you zipped through it, huh? You know, you do the little browser guy. And, oh, you know, okay. Did you unzip yeah. through? I did not. I did no. not. Um, you know, I, uh, I I read the synopsis and I was like, it sounds like a real bummer. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This woman's uh, sexual exploration derailed by horrible men. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a fun film. Not no, at no, all. No, not no, at all. No, I'm not no. like, yeah, I'm unzipping my pants, you know. Um, but uh, I just pull him down. <laughs> <laughs> the sound John makes, he's like, ah, but, uh, <laughs> here I go with my private time. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so I, I was like, I was like, I, I, you know, I was really glad there was one on, but then like it started, and I was like, I don't fucking just. Sh I want to know just how salacious and fucked up it is you know if, if it is full blown porno samurai killer his dick's everywhere <laughs> mm. if his dick's everywhere I would want to see it of course yeah. well, of course yeah. you do the yeah. kamikaze guy yeah, yeah I would love to see his genitalia yeah. if it's not blurred out they are kamikaze oh. the shit out of this guy's dick <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we uh, need to go through uh, the porno samurai killer episode and just put Tokyo in front of all the titles <laughs> <I know. laughs> Tokyo <laughs> Tokyo Emmanuel, Tokyo Deep Throat. Fuck. I'm going to watch. Tokyo. I am going to watch tonight. Yeah. Tokyo Deep Throat is supposed to be, um, I, I couldn't find a, a an online thing of that, but that's supposed to be like the big one mm -hmm. of um, all that studio's movies. Um, but, I, like, the, the guy that wrote the biography of, of the Lockheed scandal mm -hmm. said, um... A porn actor doing a kamikaze attack on, on, on the main figure involved really illustrated the obscenity of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can't believe this is another one. Can't believe there's not a movie. 
of, of course. Yeah, we're gonna it, like you know the informant is like uh, something yeah. that kind of like you know we're gonna get this useful idiot, right? And uh, I mean, I, I don't know, dude. I, I got maybe I'll write the script. I don't. Know. All right, it's got it all. Yeah, it's got it all. You know, my passion is I love porn, but my real passion is writing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I mean, Jesus, like and Air Bud. I love dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I put a dog in it. Too. Fucking Chris with Air Wait, Bud. Dude. Dog if, flying a plane. Dog flying a plane into a mm. not Tokyo only Air you, Bud Kamikaze. You can fly too. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Where's your leg? <laughs> <laughs> but the, that is uh, that is the story of the porno kamikaze killer. Wow! Excellent story, John. I don't know how else to uh, to end the episode other than uh, um, I love it. <laughs> Isn't it good? It's a Isn't very it very so good, good episode. Wow. That must have been. I mean, for anybody living in that neighborhood. That's that's a story you tell forever. Yeah, and so like neighbors didn't even really know it went down. They're just like they just said it was like this the stink of fuel. Ah, like, yeah. we, just, we just smell fuel. Ah, there's a plate over there too. And and, uh, and um, he uh, uh, Kadama was was known as like a benevolent man. He donated a lot. He gave a lot in the neighborhood. The neighbors loved him. Sure, Godfather. And yeah. He was very, very Godfathery, yeah, right. and uh, you know, donated to a lot of causes. But he had 175 mil from the fucking yakuza and bribes. Mm. So of course he was generous, you know. Uh, but they're like everybody in the neighborhood to this day like loves him, and nobody even remembers the porno guy's name. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But, I mean that's kind. But of... that's why this show exists. Exactly. <laughs> that porno guy's got to have his day in court. And we're gonna the, give it to him. That's sometimes the problem with making a, a point with suicide. <laughs> right. Is usually you do it before uh, you live long enough to tell the story. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And then, and yeah, other people get the last word. Yeah. You know, like that editor of Christine Chubbuck is like, yeah, she couldn't get pregnant. Yeah. yeah. He's like, thanks. The end. It has nothing to do with our programming. Yeah. Thanks, she, I dude. think she was lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Good insight, man. She yeah. was barren. God, I, 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 I was completely, completely shocked by this story. Um... I got I got to find the guy that suggested it to us on Instagram and yeah. thank him in the Shout next out. episode. Shout yeah. out to him. Uh, but uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant idea. Uh, brilliant suggestion. Yeah, it, it, some it really great was. ones coming yeah. from you guys, and we are going to do more. Thank you. User suggested things because sometimes we run run dry. You yeah. Know? Uh, sometimes we get a burst of inspiration, and we're yeah. like, we could do this person and this person and this person. And but something like this is 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 it's perfect. It's I right want, on, and I really it's so wanted on to brand. Do it's so on brand. While Christine Chubbuck was still fresh in the listeners' minds, yeah, and also fresh, Mishima yeah. was fresh. And I, oh, I am standing by my promise that once we get to a to be determined subscriber <laughs> count, I will recreate the Yukio Mishima shredded pick where he is wearing, I think, a dish towel right. over his genitalia, yeah. holding a samurai sword. No, it wasn't for Cut. dishes. It was just yeah, a dick towel, I believe. A called. dick towel, uh, and he is holding a katana, it yes. looks like. Mm -hmm. I will recreate that. Wow. Uh, That'd be great stuff, Aaron. Ooh, you know what? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love Japanese culture. I love the male body. <laughs> right. Uh, I love, yeah, I love know. the you do. The samurai tradition. You do. I do. Yeah. The bushido. I love I it. Love, I, love uh, it. I, love it. Uh, I love oil on my body. I'm showing it off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You do. Sorry. Yes. Well, it's strength. It's a you know. It's made for movement. It is made for movement. There mm -hmm. is emotion mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. 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 And you're not forgetting leg day, which is very I do not oh, forget. You cannot leg day, do not. No. Yeah. No. Guys, that's it for us. I love you. I'm John Fahey. I love you guys, too. I'm Aaron Pita. I'm Amber Thanks for listening. Good night, guys. Good night.